Hi, uh, my name is Scott Register. I'm Director of Product Management here at Breaking Point Systems. I just got back from the Cloud Security Alliance conference in Orlando, and I wanted to sort of share some of the, the observations and things I learned from, uh, from my session where I went and presented to the, to the attendees. There. The audience at the CSA, they were specifically concerned with kind of larger scale deployments. Um, you know, if you're if you're a smaller organization, you got you know maybe I don't know a thousand people. It's not as big a deal. But if you're doing a larger deployment, you know tens of thousands of users, and especially if it is going to be um, sort of internet accessible, right? You get, it's a you don't have to get there over a VPN. It's a web accessible, especially you know uh, just you know web apps things like that. There are a whole host of concerns that you probably have never run into before, and it is very difficult with the kind of traditional um, user simulation tools to try to model a large private cloud deployment at scale. Right, and one of the things that we've learned in testing here is you can't just test something with, let's say, a thousand emulated clients, and then extrapolate from that and assume that, oh, if I have 50 times this many people, things will start, you know, scale nicely because you'll start to hit memory limits. You know, your box starts paging. I mean, there are all kinds of little things that can happen that, you know, that once you get sort of past that knee, there are all, there are all these dominoes that, that, uh, that fall over, and that's just on the performance side, right? And there are all kinds of other um, security concerns and things like that, and you have to worry about not just like how secure and how stable is the environment, but how, you, since you know that you will come under attack, just if you're on the internet, it's gonna happen. How well, did, you know, if you're building out something for 50,000 users, then when you're under some kind of attack, how many users can you still support? Is it 10,000, is it 40,000, and what are your kind of service level agreements and, and uh, things like that? And those, again, you can't, you can't do a little test and then extrapolate, you really have to do that kind of thing at scale, or, or you're just not gonna know. Well, so, you know, so, so this, was, this was interesting. I was, um, I was, I was frankly, I, I was amazed actually at how many of the people in my audience were either were rolling out or had deployed private cloud deployments supporting more than 50,000 people. I was not surprised that none of those people had tested with more than a thousand clients. Many, uh, the bulk with far less, like maybe 500. So they were using the kind of traditional tools. Uh, HP Loadrunner was, was the most popular. There are some others, uh, like I think Borland, Silk. There were a few others, but Loadrunner was the most popular. And what they were doing is they were just testing at, at you know, a very small scale and hoping they could extrapolate up. And they were doing that just because of um, pricing and kind of deployment capacity. You know, it takes a lot of servers and a lot of you know management and software and setup time to tr really try to do multiple thousand kind of load runner clients. And it, the cost and complexity was prohibitive for them. It was clearly an eye opener, right? Because a lot of people, you know, I asked one of the questions earlier. It's like if you could test with realistic load from the kind of user load you expect, would you do so? And of course, everyone said yes. Um, and so when I said, when I showed them, and I was clear, you know, we're not, I'm in no way like disparaging load runner, it's a great tool, we're not trying to like com compete with it, but showing people that you can do, you know, kind of a limited scope, maybe 10% of your users are, uh, are load runner, and or, actually, or less than that, but some percentage is load runner, and use us for all the rest because we can, you know, we can make the application queries, we can do all those things. Load runner has some specific in instrumentation that's very nice, and you can get some good measurements for that. But seeing that you could take, you know, that kind of small sampling of actual load runner clients and let us be the other, you know, forty nine thousand five hundred clients who are querying the web app and doing the DNS queries and doing all the other traffic and, and that kind of stuff, uh, that gave, I mean, people were clearly happy that there was some way that they could accomplish that, that, that there were kind of cost-effective tools out there that would let them uh, that would let them do that. And again, that was just on the performance side. I mean, we, the, uh, 
it was interesting. A lot of the you know kind of application guys weren't necessarily security people, and they didn't have you know a lot of them had maybe uh, contracted with some pen testers and things for the kind of application security, and that's fine. That that that's a good thing, but they had not really done uh, DDoS testing, and you know they had not. Um, been stressing, you know, the the application OS and you know testing their IPS systems, testing DDoS systems, testing you know whatever firewalls they had set up, and even if they had done some level of that, nobody had tried to simulate an attack, you know, like a DDoS attack from some number of, of attackers, and then measure the like number of users that they could still support while they were under attack. Just nobody had the tools available to do that kind of thing. And uh, I think people were kind of surprised that it was actually feasible mm -hmm. to do that kind of testing at scale without without spending, you know, days or weeks of setup and without spending, you know, two million dollars on licensing. Oh, well, I, absolutely. I mean, it, a a private cloud in, in most cases just means a data, you know, you've consolidated a data center and you're making the applications available over the web to your employees or partners or whatever. So this could be, you know, you could be rolling out something for customer access, for internal access, whether you label it a private cloud or not. If you're trying to develop some application delivery infrastructure and server rollout for large scale use, uh, all of these things still apply. If you are making it internet accessible, you know, it's not just on a private internal closed uh, network, then all those security pieces and, and things like that apply. And it doesn't really matter if it's, if you're a hosting provider and so this is a public cloud, or if it's for your employees and partners only and it's a private cloud, or, you know, if you just think of it as a big data center, right? All, all of those principles still uh, still apply.